Today we're going to look at the motor industry. It's always had a bit of glamour about it, but more recently there's been criticisms for almost every quarter from the environmentalists and from people saying that they just can't make any money. Now, for a long time, Professor Mike Sweeney has looked at the motor industry. Now, Mike, there's lots of change going on there. Dramatic changes, and they're a consequence of uh, global competition. Uh, these changes are really uh, a consequence of the reduced margin that companies are making and the need for them to develop new cars more rapidly, and that all takes money. So we're seeing dramatic changes in the motor industry and its structure. Lots of dramatic headlines too. Look at Toyota and all their recalls. Yes, I mean Toyota, it's an interesting case study really. Toyota had a very clear vision and focus and um, it was, uh, so it succumbed, so it came to um, competition and the success it achieved in terms of leading the world in terms of sales of cars. As a consequence, it switched its focus to growth rather than to quality. And we've seen the results in terms of the reputation of Toyota now. Now, there's been lots of things going on under the bonnet, as it were, between businesses and forming partnerships in the motor industry. Can you give us some insights into that? Yes, I mean, it, it's a very interesting stage now. The industry is restructuring. Um, we're seeing competitors collaborating. For example, if we take uh, Nissan, Renault and Daimler, um, they're, they've taken shares in each company. They're going to develop new engines and, and electrical, electric vehicles. And they're using their capacities to make engines for each other's products. So that collaborative process is one indicator of what's taking place in many uh, parts of the world now. Now, overcapacity seems a big issue in the motor industry. Yes, and that's the reason why we're seeing um, these companies collaborating. Uh, there is spare capacity in their, in their factories, and so what they are doing is to share components and engines and major parts of cars so that they can reduce the costs, their costs, in each of their plants and supply their competitors. Um, of course, that doesn't affect the brand. What we see is the brand staying the same, but the components and the engines being shared across uh, co uh, competitors. Let's deal with the motor car and the environment. Uh, we've talked already a little bit about the electric vehicles, about companies uh, producing more energy efficient cars. What's, what's going on there? Well, these developments are being encouraged by governments, and so governments are making money available, which is attractive to these firms. But also, of course, new product development is extremely expensive. And if we take the small car market, um, the compact car market, that's where we're seeing electric vehicles starting to be developed. It's extremely expensive. So the ways in which they can overcome um, the costs is to share the cost between collaborators. And in that way, they reduce the original cost for development and obtain um, attractive product offerings in the compact car market. Now, we've seen lots of publicity about uh, some of the developing economies, uh, China, India. Um, certainly in the UK, we seem to be seeing a lot more cars produced from Korea. Are there, are there things going on there that we need to be aware of? Yes, I mean, I think the things are that the two markets, if you were looking for growth and increased profitability, um, the two markets that you're going to look at as a global business would be India and China. So the firms and both countries demand that there is joint venture arrangements and agreements between global manufacturers and local manufacturers in those countries. So what we're seeing is these countries moving towards um, and, and actually have established joint ventures for the provision of small cars, uh, electric vehicles and small cars, compact cars, for those markets where there's a, where there's a lot of growth, huge growth in fact. So if we look ahead, what do you see in a few years' time? Uh, there's been a lot of trouble, a lot of strife, uh, a lot of changes of, of companies. What are we going to see? Well, of course, this is speculation, and so this is just a, a personal view. Um, I think there are indicators to say that there will be more collaboration, but this time, um, although Europe is leading the way in these collaborative agreements, I think they'll stretch to America because it's attractive for 
uh, collaborative organizations in, the, in Europe to have a partner in America. It's a very important market. And of course, there will be collaborative agreements already established in terms of the Chinese and Indian markets. So we'll see more collaboration. And those companies don't collaborate will be the ones that will disappear from the, the market or be subsumed into those ones that are successful at collaboration. Mike, thank you very much. Pleasure.